America is becoming more fashion conscious every day. The nation is developing competitive markets that are on par with European fashion empires such as Paris and Milan. Fashions in New York and Los Angeles are becoming as sophisticated as European fashion hubs. But Dallas is quickly on the rise as a major design center nationwide. Mark Weinberg, fashion editor for the Dallas Morning News, comments on this explosive industry. What is being sold here is in tune with anything anywhere in the world. They're, they're just as forward and most of the, uh, many of the same designers and the same lines are represented here uh, as well, if not better than they are in New York and in Los Angeles and in Chicago for that matter. In terms of what people wear here, I think it's, it's another question entirely. We're, the Dallas market is certainly growing in terms of its fashion awareness and fashion acceptance, but uh, it's not a high fashion city on the streets by any means. This is Kim Dawson of the Kim Dawson Talent Agency in Dallas. She comments on the impact the Dallas market is making in the fashion world. I know that at this point in time, we have a whole just absolutely explosive type awareness from young talent ready to make Dallas the fashion showcase that it should be. The apparel mark being here already gives them an edge because five times a year we attract uh, to Dallas anywhere from 15,000 to 25,000 people to buy for the next season. So we're enjoying being live and well and growing in Dallas, Texas. The designer is the basis for the creation of new fashions. The designer must carefully use his inspiration and insight in order to create a fresh look. This is Todd Oldham. He's one of the few local designers who is making a dent in the high fashion market. Todd Oldham combines interesting shapes and unexpected colors to create unique effects. Todd gives his impressions of the Dallas fashion scene. So I've seen quite a change in just the way people look around here. You know, Dallas, it's gotten a lot, it's still you know, highly conservative and pretty misdirected as far as I can see, but at least, you know, the people are willing to try something new, you know, new, new as far as what they're used to, not necessarily new, but it's, you know, the thing is my clothing is designed, I, you know, I designed the whole thing on sort of instinct and feel and, and you know, the way I, I think things should look for that season, so it's not, you know, it doesn't like come to you in the mail, you don't get any, like, surges, I get like an idea of, of Say, for instance, this year we did these double pants, which is really pretty, you know, rather silly idea to start with, the idea of putting a big full pant and then putting a slim pant under it and attaching it at the waist. But I, I toyed with the idea. I wanted that look of, like, layers and layers, but still I didn't want, you know, I, nobody wants to look fat no matter what, you know, that will never sell. So I just worked with it, worked with it. It's sort of a development. Everything goes over my head a hundred times before it ever gets perhaps on paper. And then it changes in a hundred times more before it ever gets made into a garment. And then by the time it gets to the store, it's, you know, again, something different. It's, it's like, you know, a little stone polisher of sorts. You know, you put in a, a raw rock and the sand keeps milling it over and then out comes the diamond, I guess. Kim Dawson comments on Todd's design. I like the audacity of him. For example, we only showed five pieces in the show uh, yesterday, but three of them were oversized sweatshirts with studs on them. They could have been worn with trousers, obviously. They could have been worn with a long skirt, but we wore them as many balloon sweatshirts. And of course, the ladies just gasped. But he has a point of view, and he has an awareness of fabrication and of style and doing something different. I think he's, I think he's a stayer. Let me talk about the coats for a minute. I sort of developed the coats out of, well, once out of necessity, working with uh, a friend of mine, he needed a coat to go to New York, and we sort of, you know, just discovered a shape, and then I overdid it by about 200%, and just made this enormously massive coat. It looks like, like a, you know, a, a full-size beds, bedspread blanket with sleeves, and it's just enormous. And then I sort of kept working it, working it into a luxurious fabric and doing that cashmere and wool. And very simple, instead of, you know, lining and facing and stuff, I decided just, you know, the fabric is beautiful, it feels good. I just would um, bind the edges at the end. I have a definite developed style, and it's, not, it's just something that sort of comes from my own personal, it's all from my personal style. You know, the, everything's big, everything's about a size too big, all my clothes are too big for myself. Um, you know, we always cut the armholes too long, and everything's just real roomy. 
because I don't like to be uncomfortable at all. Todd's own personal style, the feel and comfort of clothing that appeals to him, is projected into the clothes he creates. Mark Weinberg comments. That's a very important element in, in any designer's work is that uh, people have, as much as they may deny it, even the most unfashionable among us, um, a very, people have a very close relationship with their clothes, with what they look like. Appearance is very important, even to the most slovenly people out there. They, they purposely choose to look like slobs. But if someone uh, chooses to dress, dress well, dress in their own, what they perceive to be their own image, uh, and they choose designs by someone, whether it's a Perry Ellis or a Jane Barnes or a Todd Olam, uh, that, that's a question that none of us can answer going in. We can only see that after uh, a designer, uh, a, a new designer like Todd, or like any of a number of people here in Dallas, if once they start to manufacture and distribute their wares, and people pick up on them and start wearing them and start to relate to those as a look, then they begin to have a place in the market. Before any new designer can establish himself in the market, his product must be made highly visible. Photographing the designs on a model is the primary medium. The fashion model must be able to present a look of each outfit that the designer intended. Modeling agent Kim Dawson. They all have to be able to wear everything. The thing that I say most often, there are no bad clothes or no bad changes. There are only unprofessional, ill-equipped models with bad attitudes, and those aren't the ones I employ. So I'm very adamant about that. You're a pro model. You put it on it. Make it look good. Sell it. And as I always say, when the model's good enough, it hardly matters what she wears. She makes it look good as the other way around. And it has everything to do with being tall enough. It has everything to do with the bone structure, with the hereditary features, if you will. It has not very much to do with how badly you want it and how much you say, I'm only 5'4", but I'll wear high heels. That has nothing to do with the reality of the profession. The models in New York are so expensive now. You can come to Dallas and get really good models that are competitive for half the price. The most important thing is to make the girl look like she chose it. She put it on because she wants to wear it. And it's, that's very, you know, a lot of times that doesn't work with, with girls, with models. It doesn't work on the street. I mean, it's the whole thing of, you know, personal comfort. You know, I, I chose this because I want to wear it. Not, I chose this because it's in style. I'm looking at a page in this year's head sheet. And I'm talking about the fact that models are born, and I recognize them, and then encourage them. A model's work involves continuously selling herself to clients. This means investing hundreds of dollars into head sheets, portfolios, and composites. She makes herself highly visible, so everyone knows she's there, which is also the objective of the designer. Both must market their product. When you ask what establishes a designer in the marketplace, I would say consistency, quality, execute execution, quality of execution, I guess. Um, promoting themselves, making sure they're identified with their work uh, as much as their work is identified as an entity unto itself. Um, these are the things that, that establishes somebody in the marketplace. The fashion business always works in cycles. Todd Oldham designs his clothes two seasons prior to their appearance in the stores. The designer's world is an endless stream of sketches, patterns, and experiments, be they failing or successful. For the designer, it's a business and not a world of flamboyance and glitter. The pace is fast and the timing must be right. Designers must spot trends and forecast the mood of the masses. The zenith of a designer's efforts is in the presentation of his collection to the public. In the end, no one knows if the look is right until it is brought to life on the runway.